Hi. All right, quick video. I want to talk about self-organizing systems and how they work and how we maybe can use organizing systems, sort of centralized systems, to allow self-organizing systems or decentralized systems to work better. So let's say we have four things or eight things or 16 things or 5,000 things. And each of them is unique, right? Each, each different thing in the universe is unique in a system. I mean, that's why we call it a system. It's not just one thing. It's a bunch of different things. Um, and there can be some overlap of things, but each individual part is its own unique self. So, OK. So let's say we have one of these. And one of these. And one of these. I don't know if you can see that one, yellow one. And one of these. And for good measure, one of these. OK, so whatever these represent, these can represent pretty much anything. Um, can represent, say, uh, um, bits in a computer system. So that could be computer code for you know, the letters of the alphabet or numbers. Those actually are numbers, but they could represent numbers in a binary system, for example. Um, they could also represent, say, uh, political opinions. So, you know, let's say the the first digit, the first digit there represents um, your personal opinion about what you want from the government, and then the second digit is, you know, uh, what you want the government to do for your friends and family, um, which might be different from you. So, for example, uh, if you're, you know, if if your spouse happens to be a pregnant woman, you want the government to protect her rights, um, you know, to having a baby and to, you know, maybe getting maternity leave or whatever. But you don't necessarily want that yourself because, you know, you're different. Um, and then let's say the third one is what you think about for the larger community and what you want. Um, how you want them to be able to have their problems solved by the government, for example. So each one of these individuals is different and has a unique perspective of reality, unique way of interacting with reality. And using that, we can organize a larger system. So each of these things is a resource, offers a unique perspective of reality that we can use. So for example, if these are numbers, these are different numbers. We need all of them, don't we? We need all of the numbers. We can't really, you know, I mean, there may be some really huge numbers that we've never gotten to yet. But we need them all. They're equally important. I mean, some of them we use more than others, certainly. But they are important. If we, if we somehow didn't have access to some of the numbers, can, I mean, that doesn't even make sense to us. But somehow we think it makes sense when it turns into humans with political opinions or um, rocks with different kinds of minerals in them, for example, gold or diamonds. But why is that any more or less important than, say, the, it's not technically minerals, but the, the material that's in paper? I mean, I actually use paper more often than I use gold and diamonds. So why isn't paper more important? Because nothing is more important than anything else until you need to use it. And everything we need to use in a different way. So every situation presents an opportunity to use something different, a different resource. We can look for the different resources that we need at any given moment. For example, let's say this one. 
be four zeros, which is, let's say, all uh, conservative, a very, very, very conservative individual, for example, physically and emotionally and intellectually and philosophically, they're cautious. They, they don't like change very much. They like to preserve the things that were good in the past. That's not a bad thing, is it? Knowing the good things from the past, someone who's a historian, someone who looks back and says, oh, this was fantastic. This was something that was really important to our lives and it helped us in this way. They can explain some things that we might lose if we do change. And that's important. That's, that's absolutely crucial to know for preserving the best things about our past. So that's good. But we also like the totally positive, future change, crazy, active people. The ones who like are the go-getters and, and the ones who do and extroverts and, and extroverted in every single way. We need those too because we need to envision a better future and how we might change. So we need those people and we need all the different individual people, all the different materials, all of the, everything is a resource. Every unique thing is a resource. We, there, there's no sense in saying one of these is more important than the other because they're all important. They're just all different combinations of things that form unique resources. And when we mentally are conscious of the fact that every individual thing has its own unique abilities and differences and perspectives, we can value those things and find the place where those things fit in the best, the puzzle, the number system, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a place for every individual thing. We just have to figure it out. When we're organizing things intentionally, consciously, controlling things, trying to centralize things a little bit, we can help the individuals find their place. Right? And then they can kind of do what they do best. They can be free to do whatever they do best and fit their, fit their little piece of the puzzle so that the whole puzzle can be assembled in a nice, beautiful, strong, flowing way. Okay? Thanks a lot. Namaste.